Spicy Waffle. I'm Corwin. And I'm Uko. And today we're going to be doing something slightly different from our normal Let's Play content, slightly different from our normal vlogs. It's been a long time since we've done any sort of vlogging of any kind, but today we're going to talk about a little adventure I've been on for the last several months, and that is my quest to complete 52 games in one year, which I have successfully done. I've already done it already and it's only may like so a i'll beast. probably be doing a whole much more a whole much more a whole bunch more as the year goes on but i figured we would just do some sort of vlog where i talk a little bit about each of those games we'll probably split it into at least two different vlogs because 52 as you might realize it's a big is a ass pretty number large yo. fucking number i never would have thought that i i've I wanted to do this for years it's one of those things where if you run a youtube channel or if you're highly in interested in games you'll probably do a whole bunch of reading around on various gaming forums and i would see occasionally on the neogaf forum which is where i go to learn about a whole bunch of new upcoming stuff on games there's a lot of things that occasionally irritate me on neogaf but it's like the best place to go to learn about new games like especially, coming yeah, up especially stuff, especially really new stuff yeah, really new stuff and what's going to be happening when and i would occasionally see this thread where people would talk about trying to beat 52 games in a year one for each week of the year and i always thought i'll never be able to do that i'll never have the time or the commitment but, but he this made year the I time thought, i'm gonna fucking do that shit one way or another so right now we're gonna do a bit of a rundown about maybe the first 26 games that i played and it may not be in the perfect order of exactly when i played them and some of them i started last year but i beat all of them this year so we're gonna be talking about an odd uko has not played all of these games games so i'm going to give a recommendation as to whether or not uko should play it and my sort of general thoughts on the score of a game since i forgot to mention this when we were first starting to record this video this is going to contain some spoilers and i didn't record any footage of these games so we're just going to be relying on some screenshots and things like that not going to be having any gameplay footage in the future i'll do better about that for future videos like this if we do more but uh so no no gameplay and there's gonna be lots of spoilers so starting out with number one the first game that i beat this year Watch Dogs 2 now Watch Dogs 2 i really liked Watch Dogs 1 so it's not surprising that i thought Watch Dogs 2 was pretty freaking cool i i didn't really like the shift of tone from being like a vigilante badass going around like popping faces and you know not caring about whether you murdered people because marcus and Watch dogs too he's not really a murderer like aiden pierce was but i generally the game was a lot better overall a lot smoother i thought the gunplay was a bit downgraded i did really enjoy the overall san francisco setting i thought that the and i thought that the, the soundtrack by hudson mohawk was freaking astonishing yeah, seriously good. uh i can't on, on another note people haven't talked about that yeah seriously i'm playing through Watch Dogs one right right now at the recording of this video and seriously the main reason why i started doing it is because i want to get to playing two so that i can hear that soundtrack track in context <laughs> exactly it's that okay. delicious it is a freaking badass soundtrack i didn't think the list of like random radio songs was nearly as good as Watch Dogs one but the soundtrack by hudson mohawk was fantastic i would recommend it to anyone purely based off of that aside from the fact that it's just a really good gta clone that's what it is it's a gta clone with the occasional irritating hacking mini game and where you have to do like weird 3d hacking environment type of thing where you gotta find the things in the real world that scene that, that part was really fucking stupid but overall i'd give the game like a solid 8.5 out of 10 and recommend it to uko absolutely for sure and then moving on to number two, Apotheon. Apotheon was one of those games that I'd seen other YouTubers like Jacksepticeye play and thought this looks pretty freaking cool. It's a Greek historical mythological. Is it the one that looks like you're on the, uh, thing. on the side it, of pottery? It, it looks like you're on the side of pottery or something like that. And it is, it's a pretty freaking, it's like a, the game looks amazing. It's style is fantastic. 
but I, I I don't know if I could really recommend it to Uko. It was just one of those games where where after a while it got very samey and uh. and there were too many little miniature things and the combat itself wasn't actually that good. That's the big downfall for that game. The combat itself is not all that good and there's nothing about the soundtrack or the story to keep you moving forward. So I'd give it like a solid 6.5, 7 out of 10, but I would not recommend it to Uko. Uko is a strapped for time type of person. And uh, I even though it was only about eight hours it took to beat it, I would say for Uko, Don't it's about four hours, okay. too many hours. Okay, so then moving on to game number three, Thomas was alone. I have Uko played has that. played this game. I love it. Is it. A, it is a fantastic game. Occasionally, I think it gets a little bit too, oh yes, we're ever so autistic with our British talking voices. <laughs> but the game is actually a really fun game. It, it is like, it's, it's a really enjoyable platformer. It's the kind of puzzle game that doesn't make you want to like enrage yourself it doesn't make you want to like throw Suplex your, your fucking computer through a window or something yeah. like that so i would recommend recommend thomas was alone to anyone it's a very short game it's very the chill. characters despite just being boxes they make are you care about them. freaking it's very lovable cool. i thought it would be more of a tragic ending based on how everybody talked about it but i didn't think the ending was really tragic at all i thought it was fucking and also, awesome there were a couple of times that, that game had me laughing so hard that i cried so that's and, always and good. It had a fantastic villain, okay? It had a fantastic villain that was sort of like suddenly introduced right at the end. So I would seriously give that game, like, especially given its length and its price, like a nine out of 10. That's exactly Everybody what I was going to say. Everybody should play Thomas Was Alone. It's fucking awesome. And then for number four, Dishonored. Now, Dishonored was a game I had tried to play many times and never really found myself capable of enjoying it. And the reason why is because it's the kind kind of game that gives you all these cool ass swords and guns and crossbows and explosives and shit like that then it tells you hey now buddy uh, let's uh, let's not let you do any of that because you'll get a bad no ending killing. if you do see and then if you leave any uh, unconscious people out where the rats can get them then you're gonna get a bad ending see yeah, and see? yeah that, I don't even I don't know what that voice means <laughs> but that's the voice that I imagine the developer of that game using <laughs> when they're trying to take a massive dumper on my fun <laughs> okay yeah. the, game was, the game was really <laughs> enjoyable but but I, th that the whole thing where it's like we're giving you this slew of of lethal abilities, but then telling you that you're a fucking bad person, and if you kill the bad people instead of leaving them to rise again and take a dump on you and your and your like little princess girl, then uh, everything is gonna everything is gonna suck somehow because the universe is gonna know you did bad things. TM, okay? <laughs> Trademark bad things. But overall, the uh, the general sort of Deus Ex slash System Shock style gameplay was flawless and totally on point, on fleek, one might even say. And I would recommend it to Uko, absolutely. Just, just go into it expecting to get the bad end and then YouTube the good end, okay? And pretend that you got the good end All right, instead. we'll do that. That's, that's, that's what that's I do. I just, I, I hate games that do that, that thing where they're like, we're giving all these options oh the other thing is the other thing is i hate when games they give you like the sort of where you use some sort of vision to see through walls and collect all the little things and it puts this horrifying like desaturated piss filter all over the beautiful oh, game i don't like that and then then it like encourages you to use it to get all of the things so, oh, so you why never not see the beautiful disable, parts of the why game. Why not just disable that shit fucking entirely so we don't get shit on by the piss filter? I, I agree don't with that. fucking get it. Get your shit together. At least Prey doesn't do that. But they did it. The, the piss filter vision does rear its ugly head again in Dishonored 2, which I will get to later on. But I would say that Dishonored is a solid 8 out of 10 game. I really enjoyed it. Then, moving on to Crisis 2. Crisis 2 was like the most overrated shit to me. 
I mean, I'd heard a lot of people talk about how good it looked. I know it's several years old, but overall, I would say that Crisis 1 was a better game and that it looked better and that just the Crisis 2, let's have really ugly New York be invaded by aliens and the aliens oh, try yeah, to spunk all over you your back that, and stuff. And I got the feeling you were not really into it at all. Crisis 2 was not the worst game that I beat this year. That would definitely be another game in the Crisis series, which is coming later on in this list called crisis three but crisis two overall kind of boring tries to force you to be a little bit more stealthy than you should be i didn't fucking like it i would not recommend it to uko something like a six out of ten for being a half decent fps that's what i'd give it and we're moving straight along to steam world dig which i quite enjoyed is a very short game it only took me a few hours to play it's kind of like minecraft with the story and no building things instead just the digging part and i mean it's more like terraria actually it's more like terraria like terraria the without story, the base building without the base building and i mean i love the base building and things like that but it was kind of cool to just be able to dive in and do the straight up digging part without worrying about getting invaded by a whole bunch of skeletons that want to sniff your nurse's asshole until she explodes okay <laughs> that's that's what i like wow. about steam world dig i just got to do my thing kill all of the bosses take a big he steaming robot shit all over their faces and then i was like yep yeah, what's up motherfuckers i win bitch i'm the fucking steam world motherfucker that's what i just did to you so i would give it even though i'd only give it like a seven out of ten as a review of the game i would definitely recommend it to uko and cool. pretty much everyone else excellent it's a very short fun cheap game and i think there's gonna be a sequel to it there was some sort of steam world heist sequel that already came out but it was more of just like an XCOM in 2d slash side scrolling thing i haven't played it yet since somehow that just kind of put me off I don't know why, but moving on to number seven on this list, Double Dragon 4, which we played on the YouTube channel, and it was pretty fun, but not really something that lived up to my expectations. I, I gotta agree. That's how I gotta really? feel about it. I hated the platforming bits. They made me yes. wanted to pull the shit out of my ass it wasn't, and flip it onto a table and then flip the table. It okay? wasn't a matter of having to, be, having to be pixel perfect. It was just kind of janky. It didn't feel right. It was right. just generally janky. And then we eventually had to use a cheat to make it where we could just go straight to the last level because I can't stand that shit where we got to play through the game every single time and get to the last level. Fuck yeah, that. I, I do seem to remember at one point you did threaten to go to Ikea buy a table assemble it and yeah. fucking flip and it take okay. a shit on it first so i can <laughs> flip my shit and a table at the same fucking time i give it about like a 5.5 out of 10 or something like that it was fun to play with uko that's, that's the yeah that's that's that how is. that is it's, yeah. it was fun to play local co-op but for the price and if you don't have somebody to play it with locally totally fucking pass on that shit 17 times a day and 34 on fucking sunday that's what you gotta do okay and then number eight one of the one of the few games that's actually worse than double dragon 4 on this list call of duty black ops 3 i fucking hated that game okay i don't hate call of duty like a lot of people do but black ops 3 was the i only played the single player i didn't play the multiplayer it was the most abysmal pile of steaming shit in my opinion there was nothing Thing redeeming about the storyline in any way and the ending part where you're going through some sort of trip out world with all sorts of weird ass i don't even know what the fuck i would say going through some sort of we i enjoyed the part where you're tripping out and thinking you were back in world war ii but now we can just play world call of duty world war ii when that comes out this year i wish we will if you want to play a single player first person shooter please do not play call of duty black ops 3 play the next game on my list instead because call of duty black ops 3 single player campaign was one of the worst things i have ever experienced in first person shooter gaming don't play it it sucks all of the ass four out of ten and that's being a bit fucking generous just because it doesn't crash and look pretty good <laughs> then for number nine we have call of duty infinite warfare the game that everybody hated on when it was first announced and i fucking hated on it just like everybody else did but it was the single player campaign for that was one of the most surprisingly fucking awesome things that i have played in years seriously if you dismissed it 
and then you have the opportunity to borrow a friend's copy of it or play it on the cheap go ahead and do it play the single player campaign for that game because i, I only bought the only reason why i bought call of duty infinite warfare is because i wanted to play call of duty for modern warfare again and then i just i i didn't even touch infinite warfare i didn't install it didn't look at it i just i bought it for the other game which i played immediately when it came out even did some multiplayer that was really fun but infinite warfare it's like the best space game that i have played in fucking years okay yeah, I, I it's on my I list mean, of things to play very soon when you look at some of the first of all the graphical elements of it and i'm not just talking about the technical accomplishments i'm talking about sort of the art style of when you're on titan and various other moons and planets it just looks amazing to me well you know what's it's interesting exactly how i would uh, imagine it being it, it it actually reminded me a lot of uh the one lgr just did a video about a wing commander uh, yeah, I can it, see that you actually do sort get of to do the style you get to of do it. like space flying combat shooting people. What it was like to me, the thing I really liked about it is that even though you have all the all the high tech space stuff and you're flying around in space and everything, for the most part, you were just a guy with a gun, and that's the problem in my opinion in recent modern and well, recent Call of Duty games is that you're a guy with a jump pack and a giant suit and you've got power just space out of your hands and shit like that and you're shocking people's faces and i am sending like swarms of like firefly things to kill things that's fine in prey and that's fine in bullet storm but not in call of duty somehow it just it, but to me i really like the element of infinite warfare where either you're flying around in the spaceship or you're a dude going around shooting people in the face so i would recommend that to uko he can play it on my steam family sharing thing without having to buy it that's probably the one downside to a game like infinite warfare is that if you wanted to spend 60 dollars or whatever the fuck because activision is like yeah we're never going to be discounting anything see <laughs> we're like uh we're like 1920s gangsters see yeah, we don't believe in devaluing our yeah. properties see <laughs> And then, uh, and then Bobby Kotick takes a shit on everybody's chests. Okay, but uh, I would I would give it overall the single player campaign for that like a solid eight out of ten. Definitely for my money, the best first person shooter that wasn't Doom 2016 from last year. Huge thumbs up for that. Then moving on to another game I really enjoyed, which was Sniper Elite 3. As Sniper Elite 4 was about to be coming out, and I know we we should someday finish that on the channel. Yeah, that just we sort of petered out. Ran out of steam on that. Stuff I happened. I really enjoyed Sniper Elite 3. I, I've heard a lot of people say that it was like the worst one in the series. I don't really know. Well, I enjoyed it. it I have just... something to say about that is I got about a sixth of the way through it and it kept having a bug that would crash it and I can't finish it. Yeah, for me, I didn't I didn't ever have any bugs. Uko has had tons of bugs. I really enjoyed it. I really liked the sort of just slow-mo shooting Hitler and his one testicle type element of it, okay? And, I mean, I've seen people post the pictures of it. Hitler really does only have one testicle in the Sniper Are Elite Are you serious? Game. Yes. That's because real awesome. Hitler apparently only had one testicle, and Sniper Elite Hitler only Wait has one testicle. Does he? Can you see the one that's not descended and shoot it? Like uh, up in his body? I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I guess that's the one thing that I have in common with Hitler. I never thought I'd say that, is that I was born with an undescended left testicle or something like but that. But we lived in but the space yeah, future, and they fixed it. we lived in the fucking it. space future, and they got a hook, and they just pulled it down, okay? So I <laughs> for my, as long as I can remember, I've been packing two pairs of testicles. Two pa a pair oh of testicles. Oh my god, okay. you're a Krogan! A pair of testicles. I don't have four. <laughs> so I would give Sniper Elite 3. Overall, it's it's fun shooting. I I like the element of the relocating and stuff better. The relocating after you shoot. I like that better in 3 than I did in 4. Overall, it was more fun just sort of like inserting yourself and killing everybody. The one thing I didn't like is that the final boss is a tank that doesn't actually move because it's still being constructed, okay? Eh. That's the final boss. The way you kill the final boss is by, like, you shoot some stuff, you shoot a thing that's dangling on top of the final boss, in quotes, and then it just collapses onto the tank and explodes it, and then you're done, okay? It just, like, it was really an unsatisfying, not very cathartic type of thing. I agree with that. In any possible way at the fuck all. So I would give Sniper Elite 3, like, a 7 out of 10, and I would recommend it to Uko and pretty if much I can anybody make else run. who likes shooting things. Then moving on to number 11, Far Cry Blood Dragon. I love the Far Cry games. In case anybody hasn't been aware of that, 
Far Cry is awesome. I don't care what anyone says. Far Cry Primal was great. I don't care if the games are formulaic and never change. But you know what I didn't like that much? I didn't like Blood Dragon that much, even though it's the one everyone enjoys. And you would think I that I mean, it it's be, even the 80s styled and everything. But I just, I just kind of yeah. found it to be a little bit crass and uninteresting. And somehow the fact that it's just like, hey, we're setting you down and basically we're giving you like three total missions and everything else is to attack these really boring ass outposts and all of the gunplay sucks compared to the uh, original game and you're like overpowered and everything. Nah, didn't like Far Cry Blood Dragon that much. I can see why a lot of people do and I thought it aged horribly, okay? I The game to me looked hideously ugly. Like seriously, hideously, it, can't huh? be, it can't be that much older than Dishonored, but it was fucking hideous. I, 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 it wasn't that long ago that I played Far Cry 3. I thought it looked a lot better than Blood Dragon. So I'm not gonna recommend Blood Dragon to Uko. I would really only give it like a six out of 10. The, the biggest redeeming virtue was that it was short, okay? That's the biggest redeeming virtue for Far Cry Blood Dragon. So six out of 10, fuck that shit. I don't need it in my life. Then moving on to Final Fantasy 15. I actually beat this like much earlier in the year than I have on the list here, but I forgot to add it into the list of games that I'd beaten this year. So now it's here at number 12 instead of number like two or whatever the fuck it should be. And I really enjoyed Final Fantasy 15. I know a bunch of people hated it. For me, it was a return to form. I never would have thought that I would enjoy a soundtrack in a Final Fantasy game as much as I did without being composed by Uimatsu, okay? That man is to me a like god of soundtrack design. And and I, I thought once he was done with Final Fantasy, I thought like Final Fantasy, it's, it's gonna have terrible, uh, it's gonna have terrible horrifying soundtracks for the rest of forever. But the soundtrack was great in 15. I loved the way the game looked. I know a bunch of people said, oh, it's like so ugly and dated looking, bro. But to me, it was beautiful, like some sort of incredibly sexy lady or pack of four dudes or whatever the fuck. Okay, that's what, that's what <laughs> it was like. That, that to me, the only thing that kind of sucked is I like games with larger casts than Final Fantasy 15 did. And it's pretty much For just me, the four my, dudes. Like my, my, my favorite Final Fantasy game by far is Final Fantasy VI. And it's just got like this gigantic cast of people you can be. And so comparatively, the four guys running around cooking all sorts of delicious, delicious chickens and stuff, which I, I thought that was a really cool thing in Final Fantasy 15. It's like, you know, for some reason they decided we need to have all of our food look super photorealistic. And it and did. It, and it did. It, it looked super photorealistic. And I kind of wanted to rub my penis all over the food. Maybe yeah, it's gonna may, be maybe uh, people shouldn't be sexually attracted to food, but I was. Yeah, whether or not Corbin recommends it to me, which I think he will, I'm definitely gonna play it. Uh it's gonna be the next uh PlayStation game that I yeah, play. To me, the most surprising thing in Final Fantasy 15 was how incredibly I enjoyed the combat. I never would have thought that I would be like, all right, real time Final Fantasy uh, game. All right, well, fuck that well, yeah, shit. I, I'm I take a massive dump on it. I distinctly remember that when it was revealed that it would not be turn based, Corwin threw something across yeah, the room I was and like, swore fuck loudly. This shit. Final Fantasy is turn based five ever. Okay, that's the way it's got to be. So, and when I heard they were going to be doing the Final Fantasy VII remake and it was going to be real time as well, then. I really started throwing things across the room, but I don't feel that way anymore because the, the real-time combat in 15 was really good. I would absolutely recommend it to Uko. It's an incredibly long game, depending on how you want to play it, but uh, I would I would definitely recommend well, it, I just you know, Yakuza's, 10 times out I, of fucking 10. I played Yakuza 0 to like 89% completion yeah, Yakuza, or something. It's not as good as Yakuza 0, but I would say that Final Fantasy 15 of the games that I've played this year is in, in like a solid sixth place or something like that because it was a really good game so i would give final fantasy 15 an 8.5 out of 10 and definitely recommend it to uko unlike the next game on the list crisis 3 which just about made me have a mental crisis from how <laughs> fucking terrible it was it constantly wants you to do bow stealth okay fucking constantly it wasn't until about halfway through the game that it let you just kick out kick fucking loose and start going around shooting literally everything the ending was horrible i would never recommend crisis 3 to literally fucking anyone three out of ten maybe fucking less 
fuck Crisis 3. The only positive thing I'll say about it is it didn't fucking crash, okay? That is the only positive thing I can say about Crisis 3. It is literally the worst shooter game that I have played in the last 10 years. That, that Damn, like, son. The worst, the worst non, like, pick it up for $3 in a bargain bin in Kmart shooter game that I have ever played. Oh, I ain't gonna say nothing Kmart else more this, about it. Huh? I'm not recommending it to Uko, as you can fucking tell. Then, for number 14, Final Fantasy 3. I'd never played Final Fantasy 3. Seriously. Like, it's, I think it's, I it's started been out playing forever, it one time. And I, I always knew that it was, I think it was maybe the first SNES Final Fantasy game. And I, I can tell why it's not as highly rated as other Final Fantasy games. I played the Steam version, which is like a port of the iPhone version, which itself was a port of the DS or Nintendo Game Boy Advance we version or whatever. Yeah, and we're going deeper all the way into the realm of madness here. I thought that overall it wasn't that great a game. It's like the storyline was kind of lacking, but it is an incredibly ancient game. I had f I had a fun overall with the turn-based combat, but it was lacking a lot of the panache and style of the future games, and there was nothing to me about the soundtrack or the art design that particularly stood out. If, if I had had that game when I was like seven or something like that, I probably would have been really excited about it, but as a game in 2017, it's like, the best I could give it is like a seven out of 10. I would not recommend it to Uko. It's, it's, it's a game that drags a lot. Okay. That's, that's the big problem. Uh, with it. I ain't hearing it that. drags uh -uh. a lot where you're kind of like, man, now I got to level myself up some. And then you're like, man, now this is going to take forever. Every two steps, there's a fucking random encounter. Yeah, okay. I'm not Why hearing am that. I that's... doing this. No, 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 yeah, that's no. Not, that's not how Uko so, likes yeah. to get down. Seven out of 10, not recommended to Uko. Then on to 15, a game that I would recommend to Uko and literally anybody else in the and world. And obviously we played we this on the channel. we played this on the channel. Papers, please. Papers, please is a God tier game. I love Seriously, that game. If you've oh my never God. played it, play it right the fuck now. Papers, please will pleasure you in your peninsula region yeah, it's, it's until really... you start squirting sticky fluids everywhere. What he said, but it's it's one of my favorite games of all time that's like a concept game. Yeah, we played, you know we what I played mean? it on the channel as sort of as if we were the Republic of Texas instead of whatever the fuck it's actually. I can't Arstotska. even remember. That's the Arstotska. one. I couldn't remember. But to me, the Republic <laughs> of Texas is always going to be the most glorious and amazing. There's nothing really else to say about Papers, please. It's just good it's i would never have thought there was a way to enjoy a game where you're a motherfucker whose job is to tell people they can't come into your country i never thought that would be enjoyable but it's but amazing it was fucking enjoyable 10 out of 10 i'm everybody literally, should play i'm literally it. saying 10 out of 10 for that game all it could do better is being in VR, please, yes. yesterday. Yes, sequel okay? for that, We would please. totally do a whole new playthrough on the channel in VR. Then, moving on to number 16, the only roguelike on this, on this list, and the reason why I decided to include it was because I have played so much The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus that I'm just going ahead and I saying mean, you've that gotten for, all the me, endings and stuff. for me, yeah. I've completed it. I kill Delirium on, like, 17 different characters or whatever. I've unlocked locked all the characters i i'll probably never get 100 percent achievements but i i, no I, sane I person love will. i love it no sane person would get 100 uh, percent achievements on that there's you really can't say anything else about the binding of isaac afterbirth plus it's really good it's it's really it's good fantastic like i if i if i get a nintendo switch I, it's one of the games i'm definitely going to get for it because being and this able motherfucker to have doesn't portable, rebuy games being being able to have portable the binding of isaac afterbirth is fucking fantastic oh yeah you could like if you got stranded on a desert island you would love to fucking have that absolutely because eventually you'd probably go insane and start masturbating the thoughts of isaac's mom okay and uh, then why then everything would you go would there dude over, okay <laughs> love is over <laughs> yeah love, love is totally i don't even know why i said that okay i don't know why i said that so binding of isaac once again it's like a 9.5 out of 10 oh yeah perfect game controls amazingly and it's even got half Half decent co-op if you don't have it go ahead and fucking play it and if you don't enjoy it play it until you enjoy it because <laughs> that's what i fucking did and then resident evil 7 resident evil 7 i didn't know what to expect it's like me complete either, really. departure from normal resident evil i've only played a few resident evil games before i actually
actually I actually really enjoyed five. I know a whole bunch of people hate it, but I've played four and five, and that's that's pretty much it for me in Resident Evil uh, plus seven. And uh, I, I didn't know what to expect from seven, but I, it turned out to be really good. The only thing that to me is disappointing is that we didn't get the HTC Vive release for like it until, until whenever like, it's going to happen. It'll be like yeah. a year from now or something like and that. And I'm not going to play it myself until we get that because I know the ending. Yeah, and everything, I'll probably so, yeah. replay it once it comes out on the PC in VR. I don't know if we'll play it on the channel at all. Maybe we'll do the, the DLC for it then. That would be really cool, I think. Resident Evil 7, it's the best transfer from like a third-person shooter game to a first-person horror game that I could ever imagine. It's amazing that Capcom was able to make it worse, where they make it work where they went, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to jump on the amnesia train, except we're going to do it years late and after Outlast did it, but somehow still they have made it turn it out to be fucking amazing. Well, what it is, I is... think the inclusion of the ability to have proper combat at yes, all yes. is why I like Resident Evil 7, but I don't like Outlast or Amnesia. That's is because you those hit the nail on the head. Too yeah. much running and less fucking shooting. The enemies were a little bit meh in, in Resident Evil 7. Now, I mean, the bosses were fucking amazing. Agreed. Okay? What's his name? Mr. Baker or whatever his name was. He was fucking giant. He was big, beautiful, and awesome. And I loved chainsawing him until yes. he turned into a gigantic ass tumor on the ground. Yeah, okay? that, that was, that uh, was, that was memorable. Sweet. Okay. And I love doing the little things where you take over the like, where you take over the other person in the tape and you'd be controlling that guy who was stuck in the sun's little maze of horror. That was fucked up. Resident Evil 7, not a perfect game. Eight, but a really good game. Yeah. 10 would bang again. Now, here and we. Then, come to the perfect moving game. Moving on to the big Mac Daddy of gaming here. The game that is the most surprising thing to me so far this year. My game of the year so far. I know it released like a year or two ago in Japan, but Yakuza 0. I oh cannot my God. say enough about this game. Uko actually played it even more than I did. Seriously. Which is really saying something. Uko I, does not do that very often. It's not that I love that game. I'm in love with that game. If it I, was wanted a woman, to, I wanted to make uh, sweet fucking love to it. If it was a woman, I'd be blowing up her phone trying to get with her just intensely, okay? <laughs> yep. it, I just love and it. The thing about Yakuza 0 to me is I have, I have tried to play Yakuza games in the past. I tried with Yakuza 1 played some of it didn't really get it then i tried to play yakuza 3 and that was completely fuck nuts crazy given that if you try to jump into yakuza 3 without having played the previous game you're just confused like, well i'm gonna dump 700 years worth of information into your brain now and you're gonna think what the fuck is happening here but it, so what this means is definitely jump in with zero play it as the first yeah, yakuza one. zero is to me I have never been so surprised by how amazing a game was. As soon as I started playing it, I fell almost instantly in love with it. And then when it gets to the big reveal where you switch from Kiryu to being Majima, and then he's being completely fucking crazy. And then you're meeting up with some dude named Mr. Libido and he's thrusting around in his underwear. And the game is just, if you, if, if it's wacky and bizarre, it exists in that game. Exactly. Okay? There's I love a dude, it. There's a dude who starts picking on you and trying to fucking mug you because because he's angry about being bald and you having a luscious head of hair. Okay? And there's another dude who's similar who he wants to become the strongest living creature. And yeah, and that thing is, <laughs> I, I've seen some videos of some of the later games like five and six where some really whacked out shit is happening. I, I have seriously, I've gone on a rampage of playing Yakuza since then. The most recent game that I beat was Yakuza 2. Like when I, when, when Yakuza 1, when, or when I finished Yakuza 0, they hadn't announced yet the remake coming to America of Yakuza 1. They call it Kiwami. Is, yeah, Kiwami, which is, seems like a really weird, questionable decision because people are going to be like, what the fuck is a Kiwami? I don't know. I know more about like Japanese video games than most people. And to me, I'm like, what the shit is a Kiwami? But I like, so I did a whole bunch of, I, I didn't want to play through the PS2 game. So I did a little bit of reading about what happened in Yakuza 1 and spoiled myself. And then they were like, Yakuza Kiwami coming to America, August 2017. And I was like, no! I'm really stoked, but sad that I fucking read all that stuff. So I was like, fuck it. I, I, my, my Yakuza fix needs to be 
like you know satisfied right now so i i whipped out my ps2 ripped a copy of yakuza 2 on my emulator and i played yakuza 2 like a beast champion warrior and it was amazingly good for a PS2 game. Right now, I'm playing Yakuza 3, like literally right now while we're recording this video. I can't be sucked away from it. That's not actually true. That'd be amazing if I were. But <laughs> that but would be the impressive. Yakuza series, Yakuza 0, I would give it like, I would give it a solid 9.5 out of 10. Me too. Definitely my it's favorite that good. game from it's this amazing. year. That there, I, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's like, fucking awesome. I, I'm okay? literally, if I was ever going to get a recommend tattoo. Recommend it to your grandmother. Okay? Seriously. Recommend Seriously. it to fucking anyone like if i was ever gonna get it to get a tattoo i i would get like down my calves one of majima and one of kiryu <laughs> <laughs> that that seems really kind of weird to me but uh anyway um i i i i've already recommended to uko when he's played the shit out of it then moving on to horizon zero dawn and i think we're only going to go to 20 here because this is the long ass video already probably the longest vlog we've ever done by a huge margin then moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, a game that I've been looking forward to for so long, and it was actually a really good game. I don't really like action games that much, shootery action games that much on the console. I much prefer them on the PC. With That's Lemouse. why like, we never finished playing uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider because we were playing it on Xbox One and that shit drove me fucking crazy. But overall, I would say that Horizon Zero Dawn was a good game. It looked amazing. But to me, the big thing was, I, I guess it's one of those things about coming into a game with wrong expectations, okay? I thought there would be more like, more natural it'd be like living in some sort of world where the dinosaurs of technology have taken like over freely interacting and, and had an ecosystem and yeah but instead it's just it just turned out to be a big disappointment on that in that regard for me and it was mostly just like well the dinosaurs are there but like nothing is ever really said about them at least to my in my opinion and then it was like well uh all of the humans are the bad peoples, okay? You gotta kill the bad man, and fuck that shit, okay? Fuck, th th somehow it just really disappointed me, and uh, overall, the game was okay. The main character was the only character that wasn't a total piece of shit in my eyes. None of the other characters were anything more than completely cardboard to me. I would recommend it purely as a lover of open world games and not really much else. I didn't, I, I found the parts where you were shooting the parts off of the, uh, the dinosaurs. That was really cool. And I thought the world looked a lot more dynamic than it really was. So I would give it like a 7.5 five out of 10, but not really say, I would recommend it to Uko, but not really like strongly only when he has time All to right. play it. That's so, kind of what I was thinking then anyway. Moving on to number 20, Pony Island, which I didn't really know what to expect from Pony Island. All I knew was that people gave it like game of the year award from a year or so yeah, What ago. is it even about or like? Um, it's like a meta game where it's like about a game that somebody's trying to play and instead it's all fucked up and possessed by demons and it's got a Zazzle in it and then it's trying to be like some sort of magical happy pony thing and then it turns into some sort of horrifying pony adventure and the guy keeps updating it and making it more evil and then like, I guess you got zapped by something and died in the future or something. I don't even fucking know anymore. So man. was it any good? It was actually really good. It was really good, but I think it was a little bit too claiming to be artsy and not enough actually being artistically valid okay, at okay. least in my eyes it was a very short game you can play it in one sitting really easily okay then so i'll do I that would recognize or i would recommend it to uko i'd give it an eight out of ten not the not like game of the year material for me but i would solidly recommend it and that's the 20 games of the beginning the first of 20. Our, the first 20 games maybe for the last 32 or whatever we'll do it 16 and 16 so it doesn't get so overwhelming Overwhelmed. Let us know if you enjoyed this content because it was really fun to be able to talk about this. It's the kind of thing we don't really normally do on the channel. So everybody let us know if we, we did need, good. Yes, yeah, sometimes we need to do something a little bit different. Let us know if you enjoyed my sort of, you know off-the-cuff take on all of these games that I've played. Extemporizaneous speaking, bro. I am always, I am always, yeah, we just, none of this was scripted, okay? In case you wouldn't tell. Yeah, it's just a list Man, of games up on the monitor. It's just a list of games up on my monitor. I have the, I'm going to have the list listed in the description below so you can know what all games I played this year. And 
if you want to suggest the game for me, because I'm not stopping here. Okay? The list is open. The list, the list is continuing past the 52 games. If you want to suggest games, let me know in the comments below, because I am always open to playing more games, whether on the channel or off. It is so awesome. Anyone who actually sat there and listened to the entirety of this, huge thumbs up to that Hell person. yes. We're going to stop here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that sexy thumbs up button. Spicy Waffle signing out.